A very good afternoon to all of you. Can you see the video? Can you see the slide? Okay, I welcome all of you to today's lecture. Let us start the lecture. Let us begin with the great news. Yesterday, the prestigious Samdent Excellence in Dentistry Awards were hosted, and we are extremely happy to tell you that Target Educate Private Limited has won the best entrepreneurship award for the services rendered in the last 10 years for record number of ranks scored and the credit goes to the entire student community who has been there with us all the time supporting our endeavor reciprocating and uh, giving their suggestions and feedback so that our initiatives are taken to successful conclusion. So it is not only us, but the entire student community that deserves the accolades and hearty congratulations and best wishes to all of you from the entire management of Target Educate Private Limited. Keep supporting us, try to understand our philosophy and you are sure to win. And the last 10 years, we have never gone down in our quality, never gone down to a level where we will keep shuffling between this author has given A, that author has given B. We have always maintained the dignity of science, the dignity of textbooks, respect to the authors who have written the textbooks, and we have always directed our students to respect science and gain knowledge from the best books that are available around. Fine. So last week, we had perio periodontics lecture number one. Today we are taking periodontics lecture number two. In this, I will be telling you a lot of treatment aspects plus some aspects of public health dentistry which are considered very difficult. So let us analyze them. Let us make them very simple. Slide cut size. Okay. This is my email ID. I have been getting emails. One of the emails that I received last week was regarding the pregnancy gingivitis question. Whether the answer of the etiological agent of pregnancy gingivitis is microbial plaque or it should be the hormones. A few students felt the answer should be hormones. Let me clear the basics to you now. There are three types of factors. Huh. One is etiological factor. Second is risk factor. Third one is contributing factor. All these questions arise from something called as risk element analysis or multifactorial risk assessment model. There each word carries its own significance and you are supposed to know the meaning and significance of each word. There is a great difference between etiological agent, risk factor and a contributing factor. Contributing factor is 
a term which is used very less so it is always between etiological factor and risk element risk element can be anything it could be risk determinant risk factor risk predictor background characteristic it could be anything all of them are grouped together as risk elements so the major difference you should know between etiological factor and a risk element the question that was asked about pregnancy gingivitis was on etiological agent fine so etiological agent is always microbial plaque so if somebody doesn't have harmful bacteria i told you last time causation of a disease the web of causation involves three circles genetic microbial and environmental and each circle involves two factors genetic circle involves polymorphism and mutation microbial circle involves presence of pathological bacteria absence of beneficial bacteria if beneficial bacteria are more and pathogenic bacteria are less or virulent bacteria are less virulent means those which fulfill sigmund sokranski's criteria i told you the five criteria association elimination virulence factors host response animal experiments so those bacteria which fulfill sigmund sokranski's criteria if they are more and beneficial bacteria are less then the person gets the disease coming to last circle environmental circle there it is extrinsic environment or external or intrinsic or internal environment external environment is something like smoking an internal environment is something like aids diabetes malaria and stress so when all these factors combine and act on a person based on their proportion we get a disease fine so here when we talk of etiological agent most of the times the most important factor is microbial plaque so if a person has microbial plaque and gingivitis that gets only aggravated by pregnancy if pathological bacteria are not there and the person does not have gingivitis pregnancy alone cannot cause gingivitis fine and that's why suppose a person has gingivitis because of microbial plaque and then gets pregnancy which aggravates the overall gingivitis picture and postpartum after delivery the severity of gingivitis comes down on its own the severity reduces 2 months postpartum significantly and even then it goes on tapering down and after 1 year postpartum the level of gingivitis will be same as what it was before the onset of pregnancy it means what pregnancy didn't cause it it comes down to the pre pregnancy gingivitis level only now if you want to treat that pre pregnancy level of gingivitis you have to do periodontal treatment so if it was pregnancy that was causing the disease no scaling was required okay so pregnancy automatically worsens the picture and the delivery automatically brings down the level of severity but the amount of inflammation that existed before the pregnancy onset has to be treated by periodontal therapy because that is purely because of microbial plaque so don't make any confusion in this etiological factor is microbial plaque come what may it has to be microbial plaque similarly whenever there is a question from trauma from occlusion 
trauma from occlusion causes angular defects or not? Trauma from occlusion cannot cause angular defects. It is a microbial plaque again that causes the angular defects. When microbial plaque was not discovered, that time they used to think that it could be trauma from occlusion. But it has been more than 50 years now. Even now, if you talk like that, as if there is no plaque existing in the world, then that, that is very, very unfortunate. It is much more unfortunate than getting any MDS rank in any MCQ exam. Fine. So trauma from occlusion is not an etiological factor that becomes a risk factor. Fine. And then when we come to calculus, calculus doesn't come in the risk element analysis at all. It only contributes to the periodontal disease. So it's a contributing factor. So etiological factor, risk factor and other risk elements. And last contributing factor. This is the way things are arranged. So whenever a question comes to you, try to see whether the examiner is asking you. Try to understand science. Don't get into which book has given what. Today I will be showing you a question. From today you will all be doing one exercise. From today onwards you will start identifying losers. Every time you interact with somebody online, offline, anywhere. If you find anybody who says this answer is given there as A, this book says B, stop communicating with that fellow. Doesn't contribute any way to science nor does he contribute to your growth. Fine? <coughs> What is the difference between risk factor and risk indicator? We are coming to that. We will come to that towards the end of the lecture. Today it is there very much in the syllabus. Let us start with something you always loved, epidemiology. You always wanted to study, but some boring subjects like oral surgery and orthodontics ruined all the fun and you couldn't devote your entire day studying epidemiology and biostatistics. So let me fulfill your secret desires. Let me talk a bit on epidemiology and biostatistics and hope you will all have great fun. What do you want me to repeat? James Bond 007. Roll number 007. What should I repeat? The exercise. <laughs> Whenever you find anybody who tells this answer is given A in that book, B in that book, 